All right, number one, about half of you missed it, six people missed it, or actually seven people missed it, six of you chose A. Uh, and I think I know why you chose A. Anytime you see a maximum or minimum, think derivative, it looked like most everybody got that part. Okay, so f prime of x is equal to 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. And if we set that equal to 0, we need to factor. We need to start by taking out a GCF of 3. Pretty simple trinomial factoring here. That would be x plus 3, x minus 1. So 0 doesn't equal 3. We get x equals negative 3, and we get x equals 1 for our critical numbers. We're on an interval, so we have to consider the interval. Negative 3 is not in our interval. Our interval only goes from 0 to 2, so we don't include it. I'm pretty sure 25 is the value of the function at negative 3. That's why so many people chose that one, but you only can consider that interval. So we've got to plug in 0, our critical number of 1 and 2, and we are plugging those into the original because it is maximum value. Um, so when we plug in 0, we get negative 2. When we plug in 1, we get 1 plus 3 minus 9 minus 2, which is 4 minus 9, which is negative 5, minus 2 is negative 7. And if we plug in 2, we get 8 plus uh, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, minus 9 times 2 is 18, minus 2, so 20 minus 18 is 2, minus 2 is 0. So out of those three values, 0 is the greatest. So the maximum value on this interval is 0. And notice all four numbers were a possibility. Okay, uh, let's see here. Two, few people missed, but I think we're okay on that one. Three, most of was good with that one. Uh, let's look at number five. Okay, let's look at number five. Uh, eight people missed number five. The derivative is equal to x times cosine squared of x between negative pi and pi. Then the critical points on that interval are, well, you're looking at the derivative. So all we have to do is set the uh, derivative equal to 0. So it's a product. So we just set x equal to 0, and we set cosine squared equal to 0. So, obviously, all of the answer choices have the zero part in it. So, that's not an issue. The issue is the trig part. Okay? The issue is the trig part. Um, so, cosine squared is equal to zero. We've got to think about where cosine is equal to zero. Cosine is equal to zero. Cosine is the x-coordinate. So, the x-coordinate is zero at pi over two and at uh, negative pi over 2 because our interval goes from negative pi to positive pi. Um, so you've got to include that negative value. Uh, so most people chose B, five people chose B because uh, they forgot the negative part. Uh, you don't take the square roots of these guys. Okay, The cosine squared there, you plug in the pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and you square 0. Um, so it still gives you zero. So you don't take the square root, um, but it is it is C. Okay, it is C. Okay, number six. I don't think anybody got number zero. Nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, nobody got number six. Okay. Your function is x squared. Then f of x has a minimum value on which of the following intervals? All right, so first of all, we're looking for critical numbers. So we need the derivative. f prime of x is equal to x, uh, 2x 
So we set that equal to zero. We get that zero is our critical point. Okay, and you know that x squared uh, looks like this. And it never hurts to, if you know exactly what the function looks like, sketch it out so you have a visual um, to answer these questions. You know that that is the minimum. Okay, x squared goes through the origin. That is the minimum value. So if we're on the interval from negative 1 to 1, it definitely has a minimum. Okay, it definitely has a minimum at the critical point. Now, if we're going from 2 to 3, Okay, obviously our critical point is not in that interval, but we could still have a minimum value except for the fact that this is an open interval. Okay, so if this were a closed interval, then 2 would give the minimum value of 4. Okay, but it's an open interval, so we don't include the endpoint. So 2 is not a candidate. Okay, so we know 1 is, and now 1 obviously is in all the answer choices. Okay, but 2 is not. So we can eliminate B and D. Now the question is, what about 3? Okay, from negative 5 to negative 2, negative 5 is not included. Negative 5 has parentheses, so it's not included, so it's kind of like an open circle over here. But negative 2 is included. It has the bracket. So on that part, if we're just looking at this part of the parabola, Negative 2, it's y value of 4, is a minimum if we're just looking at that part of the interval. So 3 has a minimum as well. C is the answer. Yeah, you, anytime I ask about maximum or minimum values, you have to be conscious of open versus closed intervals, half open, half closed. you got to include the endpoints. Okay? So that is a very commonly missed button. Um, most of it was good with 8, 9, and 10, but let me just mention some of the common answer choices. You were just looking at the graph as the function. You were just looking at the graph as the function. So like on number 8, it says this is the derivative. So f has a local minimum. Well, some people pick negative 2 or some people pick positive 2. That would be if that were the original function but that is the derivative, so you have to think about it a little differently. Okay, so be careful with those graphs. Um, 11 and 12, not too bad, not too many people missed many of those. We were pretty good with the calculator inactive free response. Uh, most people did pretty well on that one. Uh, let's look at the calculator active multiple choice. So you get 18. Okay, let's look at 18. Uh, 15 through 17, just a few, just a handful. Uh, miss, miss those. So 18 says if the function is the absolute value of 2, or excuse me, the absolute value of x plus 2 times x minus 4, then the critical points of f are. Okay, well, I would suggest since this is calculator active, I mean, you can take the derivative by hand. That's not a big deal. If you really want to do that, go ahead and take the derivative by hand. Or it's calculator active. Use your calculator. Okay? Um, you can do that as well. I would encourage you to do that. If it's calculator active, then you can use your calculator to do it. Okay? But f prime, this would be a product rule. Okay? First times the derivative, oops, times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first. Derivative of the absolute value is what's inside over the absolute value times the derivative of what's the inside times the second. Now, technically, if you really wanted to, you could get a common denominator, all that jazz, but um, really at this point, if I'm trying to find critical points and it's calculator active, then I'm going to go straight to my calculator and I'm going to look at the graph. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, now, the absolute value, it's in the same place on your calculator as it is on this calculator. You just have to, the math button is not in the same place. I think it's like the diamond button and it's around number five or so to get to the math. But math over to num, ABS, okay, uh, x plus two plus parentheses x plus two divided by, it's the absolute value again, x plus 2 
times x minus 4. You can put that in different orders, but it really doesn't matter. It's going to be the same thing. So looking at the graph, critical points are where our derivative equals 0. So this is the derivative. So it equals 0 at negative 2 and positive 1. Okay, negative 2 and positive 1 only. Uh, 4 is not a critical point, even though it, it's in factored form. It looks like 4 should be one of your options, but it is not. Now notice the similarity between this question and number 15. Number 15 gives you the exact same function, but on number 15, it's the derivative. So on number 15, the answer is negative 2 and positive 4, because you just set those two pieces equal to 0. But that's because that's the derivative. This is the original. Its derivative is more complicated. Um, use your technology when you can. Okay, Use your technology when you can, when it makes sense. Okay. Uh, as far as the free response on the calculator active, I just want to mention a few highlights. Uh, there were a few issues with part A. It was mostly just sheer calculation. Again, if it's calculator active, I know that I've trained you all really hard to not use your calculator. Um, but if you're crunching numbers, always double check it with the calculator. Okay, some people uh, messed up the slope. They got the derivative part right, but they messed up the slope or they switched their x and y or something like that. So just minor issues with A. Uh, B, most everybody was okay with that. You plug in that x value into your tangent line. They're asking for the tangent line approximation. Um, now C was the problem. Okay, C says compare the actual value correct to three decimal places of Q to your answer to part B and draw a tentative conclusion about the concavity of the curve at negative 2, negative 5. So, notice this number, this negative 1.832, is really close to negative 2. They're wanting you to use the tangent line approximate, or they're wanting you to compare the true answer to the tangent line approximation. So to get the real answer, x is negative 1.832. So you're going to plug that into the original curve. We had x squared minus x times y plus y squared is equal to 19. You got a point just for setting that up. And technically, I think on my answer P, I'd put a Q because we're approximating Q. But if you leave the y's, it's fine. Okay. Um, but we're looking for that y value when the x is negative 1.832. Anytime it asks for an actual value, it's referring to the original actual function. Now, if this were not calculator active, you could not do this part. Uh, you've got two options here. You can, um, I would plug this in, 82 squared minus, and I, would, I wouldn't even bother with changing things. I would just type it in exactly as it appears. Obviously, you have to put an x instead of a y, even though you're solving for y. Okay, but you've got to use the variable x. And I would subtract the 19, because anytime you're solving the polynomial, it's got to be equal to 0. Um, graph it. You're looking for where it equals uh, 0, where the function crosses the x-axis. Now, obviously it crosses in two places. But think about where you're approximating it to. This is, we're supposed to be comparing it to negative 2, negative 5. So we should probably pick the y value that's close to negative 5. This one over here, yes, that is what y also equals at negative 1.832 because this is a parabola. Um, but we want the one close to what we're trying to approximate. So we just need to calculate the 0 over here. Um, between negative 5 and negative 4. And we get negative 4.975 or 9.76. Either way, it said correct to three decimal places. So Q is equal to negative 4.976. Okay, so setting it up gave you a point. Getting that Q value gave you a point. And then you've got to compare. Okay. So our estimate should have been up here, our estimate should have been negative 
Now, some of you got the point in Part B, even if that was not exactly the number that you got, because I based it on your tangent line from Part A. So if your tangent line was not 